All right, you guys, what's going on? Robert Arrington here from Deer Meat for Dinner. And today I had this awesome plan. I was gonna come out, I was gonna catch sardines and live croakers, and then we're gonna go right over there and catch a bunch of big snook and show you how to catch snook in Jupiter Inlet. I mean, typically, the water is crystal clear on the incoming tide, and there are thousands of snook. I mean, thousands of them. Now it's summertime, so it's all catch and release, but you wanna talk about amazing fun? These fish are awesome. Not to mention, there's also a school of really nice, medium-sized Cabarrus snapper that live in the inlet, and there's always a chance you're gonna catch a big redfish, although that chance is very slim. Now, anytime we have, during the summer, a big north wind or a north swell, and it dirties up the water, the fish disappear. I think they go offshore, but maybe they go back in the river, who knows. So, just like a good football player, the plan, the call, was to come snook fishing. Well, whenever I saw that that's not good, I had to call an audible. And the audible is, let's see what bait we can catch, whatever bait we can catch, then we'll go fishing for whatever that bait best suits. So let me get my head on straight, figure out where there's some bait, and we'll see you soon. I'm talking about. Oh. So today, what was supposed to be a snook fishing show is quickly turning into a yellowtail snapper and a drifting show. So the last snapper show, it was anchored up fishing long freeway rigs. Today, we're gonna be drifting. So, see what happens. Every day offshore is better than a day at the house. We'll see you soon. Dang it. Well, we were running along. Right off the left side of the boat, I saw a big manta ray pop up. And threw him a sardine. Normally, if you're the first one there, you get him a dead sardine out there. Kobe will gulp it right up, but maybe not this time. Got him. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Always gotta be ready. Always gotta be ready. Awesome. Ooh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked, right up to the tip. Cobia. Nice, heading hooked right up through the top of the jaw. Now he's got to be 33 inches to keep. So let's see where that is. It's 32 inches. There you go. That's why it's always important to have a nice spinning rod with a mono or fluorocarbon leader. This is a, this is 40 pound fluorocarbon to a red Gamagatsu circle hook and help us catch up fish. Being ready is always the key to success. All right, you guys, the audible has been called. We're bottom fishing. Now, this is a simple knocker rig. There's your lead, swivel, using pink 30 pound Andy, and I'm using about 12 feet liter. So it's much shorter, much more manageable. I'm gonna drop this live bait down. I'm using a little small owner circle hook just like that and as soon as I catch one which means they're here I'll take you inshore and I'll show you how I rig now with a with this we're drifting we're not anchored we're just sitting here and so you gently want to drop it down to the bottom always paying attention to where you're at there you go oh my fish I 
that's what I'm talking about. Once you get them up off the bottom, you go a little bit easier. This actually feels like a little blue runner or jack. See how flimsy the tip is on this rod? Oh, it's a um, little mutton. Have a day. Now let's see if he's legal. Hooked right in the corner of the jaw. That's what those circle hooks are great for. I mean, he's about a quarter inch too short. All right. Do you always want to keep an eye on your bottom machine? Figure out your drift. And if you're drifting along and all of a sudden you, you mark a bunch of bait, you know, bunch of stuff on the bottom, hit mark. Because then you can go back and drift maybe a little to the north of it, a little to the south of it, maybe right over it. If the current's going really strong, you can anchor up on it. But you've got to know where the fish are. These fish aren't just scattered out evenly. These fish are in certain areas. And that certain area is always moving. You know, like today they may be here, tomorrow they may be over there. So it's good to have a, a lot of numbers and the ability to check them all. There he is. Trigger fish. Does anyone know why we call these trigger fish? That dorsal spine you cannot press it down. It'll break before it goes down. It'll break before it goes down. But this second spine, I can make it go down immediately, just like that. See that? That's what calls it a trigger. That little second dorsal spine is the trigger. So these little rascals will bite you. They're like impossible. All right, I'm gonna rig up another rod and we're gonna start fishing. All right, so I know this is probably freaking you out. I was fishing, now I'm here, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. This is a Shimano Travala rod with a uh, Talica 16 reel. A very high speed, high power reel, and clearly you can't break them or this one would have been broken years ago. When I'm bottom fishing, 30 pound pink Andy, I typically go through about a half pound spool every summer. I use it a lot and this is how I rig. This is what I'm using right now. That's a one ounce lead. If the, if the tide, if the current were running faster, I would up the weight. You wanna make sure you can feel the bottom. Boom. You don't want it to go like a, like a lead, like a concrete block, but you want it to go down nice and smooth, feel the bottom. As you're drifting away, pay out a little bit more line, a little bit more line, so that when you feel the bite, you can hook your fish. The lead slides on the line. Then you take a swivel. This is the basis of my knocker rig. Lead slides, you got a swivel, take a little bit more of your monofilament, just tie a uni. If you're, if you're new to this, I would use about one arm length. That's a good, that's a good amount of line to use. I typically use two arm lengths on a knocker rig. And then the hook I like using is a two-aught owner circle hook. Sometimes you catch small ones, sometimes you catch big ones. But at the end of the day, that's a very effective rig. Now let's get back to fishing. All right, you guys. So I went from the uh, dead sardine to the little live pinfish. That's actually called a spot, but whatever. Uncle Larry is like a super close person to me. And he keeps telling me that I've got to show you guys, you know, how to butterfly a yellowtail snapper. Well, it's hard to do that without a yellowtail snapper actually in your hand. So that's what we're after today. Oh, there he is. Nice fish. Nice fish. I was just dropping it back out when he ate it. What a what do I have here? Is it gonna be the famous yellowtail snapper? Or maybe it's a jack. Ooh. 
Go ahead and drop yours to the right now. Do you realize that's four for me and zero for you? Yeah, yeah. I think he's gonna be a keeper, y'all. What do we have? Ladies and gentlemen, can it be? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? I see color. Ooh, it looks like a nice fish, too. Got two of them. Two of them. Uh, Ooh. good old skag. And a porgy. Exactly what I got last time. Trash can slam, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. He just put the death roll on me there, ladies and gentlemen. That was like the full blown alligator death roll. Stick as darn. I mean. He did that so fast, he was like, I'm gonna show you. Handle these things with care, I'm just saying. But that is a, I don't know if y'all can see that real well. That's a sand tilefish and he's going in the ice. I don't know if you guys realize how determined of a human being I am, but we're going to catch a nice yellow tail before we go in. There he is. Nice fish. I mean, that's the third short mutton that I've caught so far. Nice little, I mean, pretty fish, just not big enough. I told these guys to leave my boat at the dock, but I guess they didn't listen. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Reeve, are you gonna help number five? <laughs> there it is. It's all about being patient. It's all about being patient. What the heck do we have here? Ladies and gentlemen, we have another mutton snapper. Keep the small. Let me show y'all something. When you live in Jupiter, you going fishing, swing by, swing by a place called The Connection. It's a sub shop there in Jupiter. You just are not gonna find a better sub. What I do, I always go by, I get a roast beef, cut it four ways, have it individually wrapped. Then anytime you get hungry, you don't have to devour a whole sandwich or a half a sandwich. Just eat what you want. It's just enough to hold you over. Mm. All right, you guys, so we are getting down to the nitty gritty here. I just put on a guppy rig, a three hook guppy rig. So we've got one hour and then he's got lacrosse practice. So we're like, ah, gotta catch a yellowtail. Oh, look at that. Nice, right. That's a nice man. We got what we're after, you guys. Right here. Now let's see if we can catch some more of them. Finally got him. Old yellowtail. All right, you guys. He's uh, putting it on me. I can't. I haven't caught one yet. and gentlemen that will be getting butterflied this afternoon Ooh. okay now let me show you what we're using for bait when bottom fishing these are my three favorite baits squid mullet and sardines okay that the head I mean that is like bombshell awesome bait then you can take your pieces like this for your squid Cut them into chunks, good. Sardines, I just cut them into chunks about that big. And then the mullet.
Just take some fillets just like that. I'll take and cut it right down the center, just like that. Now you got mullet strips. Now what you're left with are just two perfectly baited hooks. Drop it down, guaranteed you're gonna get a bite and have a great time. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed this rigging session today. I'm out. Oh, there he is. There's another one. That's a nice one there. Woo, look at him. Look at him, look at him. Look at that. Another nice one. They're biting now. What you got? Mutton. Is it? Oh yeah, put him in the boat, that's illegal. Oh yeah. You're earning your keep now, son. <laughs> All right, you guys, so the mission was to come out and catch a yellowtail. But luckily we caught, I don't know, like five or six of them. So now I'm gonna show you guys in the very next video how to turn this yellowtail into a butterfly yellowtail. Make sure when you catch a yellowtail snapper, you put them into an ice slurry, which is just ice with salt water so that they get submerged in it and it chills them down very quick. Otherwise, they'll be too mushy and you'll never be able to do this. But anyway, if you click on the very next video, you're gonna see how I turn this yellowtail into a butterfly yellowtail. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We go.